am I here? The second question is, who am I? The third question we often ask is, <laughs> what's wrong with this world? Because after we've asked ourselves, why am I here? Who am I? And what's wrong with this world? We often wonder, what can I do to make things right? This is indicative of Lieutenant Dan. Because you see, people constantly walk through life listening to themselves. We ask ourselves questions, then we try to answer our own questions. Amen? Yes. We don't go to God. We don't look to the cross. We don't look to the Bible. We look to ourselves for these answers. Some will say, you're an accident. You just happen. Others will say, you are a mistake. You were never really meant to be. Then there are others who will say, and you guys have heard this, you're just a glorified ape. Yeah. That one day we were swimming in a puddle, we got popped up on the land, we started growing feet and eating bananas. Mm. Yeah. Those are the answers to the questions in our culture when they say, and I'm going to tell you something, they're teaching our children this stuff. Mm -hmm. They're teaching our children. So you wonder why we have a generation so confused because the answers from our culture are really no answers at all. Who am I? You've got to first understand Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he is God with us. He is God among us. And then the Bible further states in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and 9, 8, God created me for a reason and for a purpose. And people must understand that they were created for a reason and a purpose, not for randomness. Whether I'm tall, whether I'm 10 feet tall or whether I'm 2 feet tall, I've got a purpose. Amen? Amen. Whether I'm obese, or whether I'm skinny. I've got a purpose. Amen? Amen. Whether I'm walking or I'm in a wheelchair, I've got a purpose. Amen? Amen? We need to understand that God does not, has not, will not ever make junk. Amen? Amen? Our God created us in his image and his likeness, and that's who we are. And if we want to know of more about who we are, we need to look at Jesus Christ because he is the one who lets us know. Number two, we've looked at who, I, who am I? Why am I here? For those people who scratch their heads when they get up in the morning and say, why am I here? What is my purpose? Well, our culture seems to want to tell you that you are here to enjoy life, to be a consumer, and to drink life all up, just like a bottle of water. Just take the cap off and pour it down. Drink, drink. As a matter of fact, they do the Budweiser commercials and some on TV, and that's what they're telling you. Drink life up. When they do the uh, cigarette commercials that you all remember, it was nothing greater than to drink life up and to smoke one, right? That's the way the old commercial should be. You're not living unless you're a drinking and you're a smoking. That's what our culture promotes. Amen. So therefore, why am I here? The Bible says all things were created through him and for him that in everything he might be preeminent, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, and to worship God, and to honor God, and to respect God, and to do the things that God would have us do to bring glory and honor to his name, and to shine the light of truth on this world. You see, this world is a little short on truth, amen? amen. This world is so short on truth that we have Hundreds of thousands of Lieutenant Dan's out there. Amen. Okay. They're drinking. They're smoking. 
They're doing all kinds of drugs to try to escape what they see because they can't deal with life. They can't handle what's going on. So the best way to get rid of all of this pain and all of this uncertainty and all of this, I don't know who I am, and all this, I don't know where I come from stuff, is to smoke that marijuana and to do those drugs and to be drunk as you can so that you don't have to think about it. Mm. That's the world we live in. That's what our culture encouraged us to do. Fulfill and forget. Fulfill and forget. Fulfill and forget. That's what the world wants you to do. That's what our culture tells you to do. But the Bible says this. Three. Those people who can't find an answer to who I am or who am I. Those people who can't find an answer to why am I here. They ultimately ask this question in their life. What's wrong with the world? Like I said. They look at the world and they see they cannot find answers while they're consuming and fulfilling. So they say, what's wrong with this place? We see people doing crazy things every day on the news. Someone does something crazy. And you say, why would they do that? How do they do that? What motivates them to act that way? What's wrong with this world? Well, if you look to our culture, our culture will tell you this. What's wrong with the world? People are just insufficiently educated. Let's gather around and fulfill our heads with, with education. Because you see, the more educated we are, the more sophisticated we are. The more sophisticated we are, the better off we'll act. And the more better off we act, the, the, the more quiet and loving our hearts and our neighborhoods will be. If that doesn't work, then more government. Because when we bring the force of government on people, they will do what they're supposed to do. They will behave the way they're supposed to behave. They will act the way they're supposed to act. How's that working out for us? How's that working out for us? That individual's heart, and they say, I am lost. I am a sinner. I need Jesus. I want to change. And the main that change. You see, the world can say many things. The world says, well, how can wrong be made right? Well, the solution, of course, is more education and more government. Teach people more stuff and give them more information and everything will be all right. That doesn't work. We have thousands of universities in the United States of America. Thousands of universities educating millions of people. And we still have a sin problem. Amen? Yeah. We still don't know how to treat each other. Amen? Amen. We still don't know how to love one another. Amen? Man. We still marching and shooting and fighting and carrying on. Man. So education and government is not the answer. The only thing that can make this thing right is when we understand the atonement of the death of Christ. The Bible says God's book the Bible. And it tells us that if we recognize in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 that there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. If we recognize 2 Corinthians 5 21 where the Bible says, for our sake God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin. They just have to open up God's word. It is sufficient it is complete. It is enough to direct your life and Man. to give you the kind of light you need to be able to walk through this world. Walking through this world is not an easy task. We know that. Satan has placed a number of trips, trip wires and challenges and explosives in our way. We know that. Because the devil does not want you to be saved. He doesn't want me to be saved. He doesn't want us to believe in God. I told a group last week, I said, let me tell you something. If you act like Lieutenant Dan and you give the devil the keys to your life, guess what the devil's going to do with those keys? <laughs> He's going to drive you as far away from God as he can. Amen? Yes. Amen. You give the devil the keys to your life, He's going to take your car and he's going to drive you as far away from God as he can. Amen. 
Because yeah. the devil does not want you to know God. He does not want you to know the truth. And that's where our society is. That's where our culture is. Too many people, like Lieutenant Dan, have given their keys to the devil. Mm -hmm. And he's driving them as far away from God as the east is from the west. Yes. Amen. The only way to bring them back is to teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And to let them know that Jesus is the way. That yes. Jesus is the answer. Amen. That it is only in Jesus that one can be saved. Amen. Amen. You are precious. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you have a purpose. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you have been purchased. Amen. Amen. Purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And don't let the culture take that away from you. Yes. When you recognize that you are precious and that you have purpose and that you have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, you will hold on to this Bible like no other book you've ever known. There are a number of people that are just like that. We have to give them the answer. Because at that rate, they're not going to find it themselves. Amen? Amen. They're not going to find it themselves. They are going in a way of spiraling down a whirlpool that's going to suck them in and drown them. We have to find these Lieutenant Danes. So I challenge you, this day, go out of here, find a Lieutenant Dan. Take that skeptic, that person that does not believe, that person that's full of doubt and fear and mistrust. Take that person that's full of doubt, fear, and mistrust, the Lieutenant Dan's, and send this message. You don't have to torture yourself any longer. There is an answer for who you are, for why you're here, and for what's wrong with this world. There is an answer. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Let us pray.